Hey guys, welcome to A Film Darkly, where I discuss the philosophical concepts found within movies. I'm your host, Anthony Paseno, and in this episode, I'm going to be discussing the 1997 film, The Fifth Element. Uh, this movie was directed by Luke Besson, and it starred Bruce Willis, Mila Jovovich, and, uh, or Mila Jovovich, and Gary Oldman. Um, it came out quite a while back, but most people are pretty familiar with this movie, so I don't really feel the need, um to explain much of it because I, I think most of you should be aware of it um it's a it's it's a Luc Besson film so it's a it's a neat little movie that has a lot of strange concepts and strange ideas and weird designs um similar to that of uh something um Guillermo del Toro would do um del Toro I think is a better designer but Luc Besson's interesting in his designs at, at least and he actually has a film coming out soon called Valerian and um, Valerian looks really interesting um, I can't wait to see that to see if there's any concepts found within that film um, but this is going to be a continuation of concepts of feminism um, I did a Wonder Woman uh, audio podcast just uh, about a week or so ago almost two weeks ago talking about the concepts of feminism found in the movie that are both positive and negative and they aren't really negative they're just more of trying to to find the the right um the right sort of focal point if you will of what feminism should should be aiming at um you could kind of see how where wonder woman kind of crosses these boundaries that go against the modern feminist and kind of shows you where feminism should kind of lie where it sort of did lie and the feminists that we see today were are, would kind of be viewed as more extremists than than actual feminists um so fifth element is another movie that plays with the exact same notion um as as wonder woman does um in the concept of feminism as the um, hypothetical silver bullet to um, to balance the nature of man that has become animalistic like that of the werewolf so I talked about this in the Wonder Woman where you have the werewolf concept which is in an unbalanced human being who is far more animal than man and it's Wonder Woman who the feminist who pierces into the world to fix the problem like in the mythology of a werewolf being shot by a silver bullet and silver being the symbolism of feminism. Um, and you have the same concept here in the fifth element. It plays with a few other notions, but it's kind of the exact same thing. So. If you're not really familiar with the story, I just go over it real quick. It's about a guy named Corbin Dallas, who's played by Bruce Willis. And he's basically hired by the military to retrieve these four stones. And each stone represents an element of the earth, you know, fire, wind, water, earth. And there's a fifth element, and he is to protect the fifth element. And the fifth element comes in the form of Lilu, played by Mila Jovovich. And I'm probably murdering her name, but um, he has to team up with Ian Holm, who who's a uh, place father Cornelius, and um, Gary Oldman is a character named Zorg, who owns like a, a corporation and is essentially, you know, the big baddie because he um, he is working for Mister Shadow, quote unquote, and Mister Shadow is dealt with at the very beginning of the film because at the very very start of the film. Um, they they find this gigantic sun that it's a star and it's like it's getting ready to explode and it's almost like it seems to be living and they shoot these missiles at it and it does nothing and instead it destroys the ship by expanding then it starts to move and they can't figure out what is going on with this thing so that's part of the reason why they got Cornelius in because Cornelius father cornelius is actually part of a lineage of priests who have all been uh, tasked with um protecting these pyramids and the stones and they they have they have a key 
that was given to them by this alien race. And this alien race is this perfect race who basically comes to Earth every other cycle and delivers the, the, the stones along with the fifth element to stop the evil that is raining down on the Earth. And these people, and they're, they're very like, they're very um sentimental to human beings like they, they, they're not they they don't like view human beings as um how can i say this like um i'm trying to think like how to say this i guess the best way to say it is like they they sort of like are always battling with this 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 collection of evil that is mis that is what Mr. Shadow is now. So it's the next representation of Mr. Shadow. This this creature. And you don't quite understand what Mr. Shadow is. There's only small hints of Mr. Shadow. And what Mr. what the Shadow is is he or it, I should say, because it's not really a he. This gigantic sun is basically all of the evil of perhaps every conscience living thing maybe just humans it's it's sort of like it's sort of playing on a concept and that's something you kind of have to understand about this movie is that that there's certain things it does that seem kind of goofy and they they are but the reason why they're they they come off that way is because these things are they're sort of like stuff that how can I say this like there's stuff that Luc Besson essentially gave up good plot points to try and create a message and at least that's what seems to be the case for me and so that's what seems to be what he did here was he created a particular message for us and so he invented the character of of mr shadow this this entity that is made up of all the evil and based on what it is that the alien race has stated before is that this thing continues to come back and this alien race that is perfect seems to kind of have sympathy for the human race and their sympathy for the human race has them continuously protecting it and there's parts where they kind of say things that, that leave you with the with the idea that they see the human race as young and still needing to to learn and that the, the human race just hasn't got there yet but when they get there you know they, they will have finally made it and they will have finally how can i say this they will they will have finally freed themselves of the evil that they continue to bestow so it's kind of like understanding things to this degree or this level where you finally end the ethical dilemma of human nature so yeah if you haven't been listening to any of my podcasts if you go back to all of them you'll notice i talked about that a lot i always talk about human nature being an ethical dilemma because human beings are inconsistent and so this film is just trying another adaptation of that same storyline where it's showing you the, this this story of of how these human beings who are just so just so inconsistent like like corbin dallas for instance he, he has this whole background as a military person but he's also like this taxi driver now and he's kind of rough around the edges and he doesn't mind killing and he doesn't mind being violent he doesn't mind you know just just being not a great person and no one really is and the it's one of the reasons why father cornelius he, ian holmes character doesn't even trust him really he doesn't ever trust this guy because he's just kind of like you have your own intentions you're you know let me do this on my own and he actually has like a a squire who i can't remember the name of right now and he's actually trying to to train that squire um to um to basically you know be the one to go and do all this stuff um to to go to be the one to go and help the fifth element and you know he, he kind of figures he can't 
trust him. And so there's a whole thing right there where where they're kind of combating because you have this trainee that is supposed to step up and he's kind of too weak to step up. He's, he's a really weak disciple. And so you have this interesting little paradigm where they find that, that their, their help is in the hands. I mean, the, the, their lives are in the hands, not of the, the lineage of fathers, of priests or whatever you want to call them. But in the lineage, I mean, but, but in the, the, this one man named Corbin Dallas, who hasn't really seemed to care about anything. And all he does is fall in love with Lilu. So you could kind of see where I'm getting at with this. It goes back to the Wonder Woman story. It's about learning what the capacity of human life is, of human beings. Human beings are more than just the inconsistency. They have the ability to love. And that ability to love is what gives them a certain hope. It gives them a certain a certain strength and an ability to ascend and, and to, to rise out of the inconsistency and to be more consistent with one another. So that's an element that is found here in, no no pun intended, the fifth element. So, um, so what eventually happens is they meet up with this, this, um, this singer named, I think her name's Diva, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I have it pulled up right here, so I'm going to look real quick. Um, yeah, her name's Diva. And Diva has this cool little, you know, sort of techno-ish, um, you know, song in the film that's kind of neat and everything. A lot of people like to, to talk about that one scene. But you find out that she has the stones, and the stones are literally inside of her body. But there's a part where she's talking to Corbin Dallas, and she tells Corbin that Lilu's going to need you. And she's going to need your love. And in that's her foreshadowing what is eventually going to happen. Because Lilu starts to learn human history. And when Lilu, this perfect human being, learns human history, she doesn't have a lot of hope for them. Because human beings have concocted some of the worst things in history and they're inconsistent in their nature. So she's faced the, eth the ethical dilemma similar to how Wonder Woman is faced with it. Where it's kind of like the whole time she thought the evil was sort of its own entity that had nothing to do with the human being. And was just sort of like circumstance of their situation or their society or however you want to put that. Similarly to how Wonder Woman thought it was all Ares causing, causing all the, the mischief in the world. Lilu seems to think this Mr. Shadow is sort of its own thing, but she figures out, wait a minute, it's the human beings doing this. They're the ones creating this problem in themselves by being so inconsistent in their human nature. And this is an interesting little idea because you 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 sort of get this message that human beings are, are not evil or bad or or whatever be, because of their surroundings it's not very deterministic in the sense of human beings are terrible human are terrible because their their culture their surroundings have made them that way and so they can't help who they are they're inconsistent because there's something on the inside that makes them inconsistent something rotten so to speak and in the only way it seems to cover up that rotten is to love to love your neighbor as yourself to follow that golden rule of doing something that is that transcends the typical animal nature and moves into a much more enlightened nature and so Lilu has to learn this and she learns it when Bruce Willis is holding her at the end of the film and they have the stones all set up and everything and they need her to react to stop Mr. Shadow who's on his way to destroy the earth and remember this isn't the first time this has happened so it, it's also going back to the, the the cycle and this is something interesting because you see this in the bible as well where there's this cycle where Adam and Eve screw up and they get kicked out of the garden their whole world is collapsed where the tower of Babel 
the human beings are ascending and trying to reach God, so to speak. And their tower is destroyed and their language is, is separated and they all speak different words now. And then you have, you know, and, and you have the story of Noah, how the human race has gotten so bad, God floods the world. And then we have this revelation in the Bible that talks about a future event where again we're going to see the reign of God on earth and in another you know catastrophe of judgment so it kind of speaks to the same idea that human nature is consistently terrible and there's always these things that happen that sort of wipe everyone off the face of the earth except for a few and then they have to restart it now in 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 religious texts and the christian text specifically you have the character of jesus christ that comes in bearing the gift of love to try and stop all of this and he has all these dealings with women which is one of the interesting aspects and all this sort of stuff going on so, so you have this 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 clear like different take where it's like okay no more destroying all the humans Let's see if we could somehow rehabilitate them by, by presenting them with salvation. And so when you, you look at the character of Wonder Woman, it's the same thing. It's salvation through the feminism, piercing into the, un, piercing into the inconsistent nature that is, that is not balanced between good and evil. And thus restoring it to its balance. Not getting rid of the evil. But restoring it, bringing that grace, mercy, salvation sort of storyline. So Lilu is sitting there in, in, in Bruce Willis or Corbin Dallas's arms and he tells her, I love you. Because she's like, why should I save the human race? Humans kill each other. And he's like, I love you. You know, it, it's, it's because because of that. And she does it because of that. She gets in the center, she does her thing, she, a beam fires from her mouth, and it hits the sun and destroys the sun from a female's mouth, who's the perfect human being, a female. So it's going back to this feminist idea that the feminism being the purity to hit the inconsistency of human nature that has manifested itself into this creature, this fire creature that is going to destroy them all. And it's not the first time it's happened. And it won't be the last. But as long as human beings have love, it's the hope that will continue to be there for them. And that's what the fifth element is trying to tell you. That's what the fifth element is giving you. It's that story, this, this concept of feminism. And there's also something to be said about the fact that the human being is the fifth element. It's, it's relating to what the human being is to nature. That the human being doesn't necessarily, isn't necessarily a part of nature similarly to an animal, but is different through its consciousness. And if you want more on consciousness, you know, I, I would suggest going back to Ghosts in the Shell because I talk about consciousness there. And eventually I plan to do the, the movie Her. And if you haven't seen that movie, please take the time to watch that movie because that movie deals with consciousness on a very interesting level i find that the movies that deal with transhumanism or the idea of an ai being alive are the best films to watch on consciousness you just keep that in mind so anyways um this concept though of feminism breaking the imbalance is an incredibly fascinating one and i i more than likely intend to do more on it well, that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to like and subscribe or follow. I'm on Google Play, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, Twitter, and you can even find me on Minds.com. Don't forget to check out some of my older podcasts. So I hope you guys enjoy your day, and thanks for listening. Bye.
Well, that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to like and subscribe or follow. I'm on Google Play, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, Twitter, and you can even find me on Minds.com. Don't forget to check out some of my older podcasts. So I hope you guys enjoy your day, and thanks for listening. Bye.